Yeah, let's go right to it then. Uh, well, Chemical Warfare, of course, just came out to rave reviews. So what are your own Felix feelings on the album after such a good reception? Um, well, that's awesome to hear. Thank you. I didn't know, I didn't know how it was being perceived by, by people. Um, I, I've been making other records already. So I'm really excited to hear that news. I, I, I'm really proud of that record. I think it's a, a, a really dope, energetic album for the band and like definitely a step forward for the band's songwriting career and, and you know, record releases. So I'm just really proud of it. Yeah, you said you are working on new music already and seems like that's the thing during the pandemic. But did the pandemic already affect the writing and recording of uh, this album? Um, I mean, slightly it did because, um, you know, kind of stopped some of the other band members from getting in the studio. So, you know, our drummer wasn't able to come in because of the pandemic and he has children and stuff. So we had our friend Brandon Soller from Atreyu play drums on the record. And we had um, our other friend Travis Barker play drums on a few songs as well. And uh, ended up turning out great. Stoked about it. Yeah, like you said, that you haven't really read the reviews yet, but uh, what kind of experience has it been for you to release new music in this time? Uh, it's certainly different. I mean, the landscape is different. We, we released an album and, you know, typically in the past, we would just tour the record. We would, you know, there would be a, a tour lined up for the release or we'd be on the road during the release. And this time it, um, you know, we dropped the record and we didn't really do anything after. And, you know, um, so it's a little different. You don't feel the immediate reaction because, you know, you drop something and you're not speaking or hanging out with your fans pretty much. Talking about touring, uh, what is your take on the streaming gigs? Uh, I think they're cool and whatnot. They're definitely nothing compared to a live show. You know, they're not as interactive and as cool as a live show. But I've seen some people do some really cool streams out there. And, um, you know, it's just definitely changed the landscape. It's just changed how um, I work. I'm a songwriter and producer. So um, before you'd have to get in the room with people to write songs and now I, I jump on Zoom and I'll write songs with people on Zoom and, and that sort of thing. Actually, going a bit back in time, I was actually listening to Dying Is Your Latest Fashion again from 2006 and realized it's 15 years ago. Well, like, uh, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about the time you joined the band in 2013? Uh, I just think about... Um, I was going through a lot during that time in my life. I was living in Hollywood in like a, a, a one bedroom apartment with like two roommates. Um, I was kind of in between bands and I was in the studio a lot. And, you know, I got hired by um, a few artists to play with them. And I was working heavily in the studio as an engineer and a producer and, um, I just really wanted to go on tour and I wanted to do it as a lead guitar player and, and the escape fate opportunity kind of like arose and I, and I called them a few times and we had had, um, you know, past things like back in the day, Ronnie wanted me to join the band when we were on tour with escape fate um, with my old band. And then a second time Ronnie had hired me to join the band and the tour ended up getting canceled. And then this time I was uh, in the studio and I heard that Escape was looking for a guitarist possibly. And I ended up reaching out to them saying I wanted to join. And it was like the first time I, I wanted to join the band actually, because they were doing some big stuff and they were going on tour with Avenged Sevenfold. So I joined the band and then we went on tour with Avenged Sevenfold and you know, the rest is history. Yeah, already been eight years of that. So how does it feel to be uh, part of a band with such a rich history? 
Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we're always creating a new history, I guess, you know. What's the kind of secret for the this kind of longevity for a rock band? What do you think? Uh, I would have to say, like, hands down, like, the fans. Without the fans, we would not be together. Like, if we didn't, like, bring people to shows, for example, I don't think we would be doing this anymore or whatever. And if if, if people didn't like our music or, you know. So, like, as cheesy as it sounds, like, probably actually the fans because we probably would have killed each other sooner. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, you mentioned fans as like the driving force be- uh, behind like great rock bands. Uh, but one thing fans do like to do is kind of argue about bands too. And I remember like uh, already years ago with Escape the Fate, like people had difficulties like boxing you. Uh, like, is this emo rock metal core what it is? Is this something that has, uh, has it ever hold any meaning to you? Yeah, uh, I think so. I think it's always been a conflict within the band itself. Um, yeah, the fans and like, you know, they're polarizing like expectations for the band. The band started out, you know, we did Dying Zillia's Fashion and I was in a band called Love Hate Hero, which was like, Love Hate Hero basically started Escape the Fate, like my old band started Escape the Fate and um we were both in the same scene so it's like i understand it all like very clearly and it's like we were all like pop punk kids that loved metal and it was literally like we were crossing like our two favorite genres like we're listening to like like bands like avenged sevenfold and azalea dying even like all like the newer metal bands that sung and and you know we all have slightly different influences and that's kind of like where it all comes from like we'd have the pop punk vibes and drum beats and that energy but also like we're like kind of the forefront of like the screamo genre like all of us like like we didn't know what we're doing you know it wasn't planned out we were just like this guitar riff is sick and we're gonna play that and then And then we're gonna go into this next part, which is maybe like a different genre. And then I'm gonna play a guitar solo and then we're gonna scream. It's like, we're just kind of throwing shit that we thought sounded cool together. And that's that's kind of how it happened. Basically really hard or impossible to analyze things as they are happening, but something like this, like being a pioneer in something like uh, looking back at it now, like what kind of feelings does that bring over? What do you think that was about then? How how did you guys like stumble onto this new thing back then? I don't know. I guess we were just like trying to like copy other bands probably. And then like we did it in such a bad way that it ended up sounding like a completely different thing. Where it would just sound like, like, like I would walk in and I would probably be influenced by like some metal guitar licks or solos or riffs while the singer was like inspired by like taking back Sunday who we'd like just you know throw those two things together kind of just come with like something completely new and different and like not exactly what we were trying to emulate you know you mentioned the writing new history all the time and uh and you are writing new music already so uh what's the feel at the moment is is something different now than it was for uh chemical warfare yeah i guess just with like the fan expectations and like some of the comments like people are so like confused like this i don't like this pop stuff and i'm like this is not even pop like i I work in pop music i work in alternative music i just did the machine gun kelly records did, did number one um You know, I've been working with this artist, Kenny Hoopla, and I, I work with Travis Barker full time. And we're like, kind of like on the forefront of what's happening in music. So it's like, so my kids are like, this isn't, this isn't this, or this isn't that. It's like, where is that coming from? Because like, we never thought of these things. Like we never thought to like, we're this or we're that. It's like, we just do whatever we wanted to. We've always done that. So it's like, nothing's actually changed. 
but people just like perceive it as changing because it's like they felt fall in love with like one of our specific records and we've had so many albums at this point that they fall in love with any one of those albums and they want it to all sound like that album because maybe that album came out during the hardest time of their life and, and it like broke them through it and, it and it helped them in some low point of their life or else it's like it gives them a certain feeling and they're never gonna have that feeling again, but they want that feeling again. So they like are searching for it in a new record, but it's like a new album is just gonna be a new album and you're gonna be in a new chapter of your life and you're either gonna like love it or hate it, I guess. And the old album's always gonna be there. So there's no reason to make a, an old album a second time. Um, but that being said, I guess, I don't know. I feel like inspired to make some like heavy shit, just like, you know, so that maybe, maybe we'll do a heavy record next. Yeah. Is it like uh, unthinkable to release another album, like with these special circumstances of pandemic or, or more likely, uh, do you think that this time will change music industry in a big way? Yeah, it has already, you know, just with the writing and communication and, you know, uh with meetings like things that we would ha usually have to meet people in person now it's like everyone's just more comfortable using zoom um it's a you know definitely made that easier and for my life personally like it changed in, in the biggest way like you know i've had like like i worked on an album that that went number one and you know we're on billboard awards this year and, and uh and then the escape records are really dope and we're making more escape records and i'm i'm continuing my continuing my journey in audio and working with as many artists as possible just one of my goals